Tired of choosing between Airtable's sleek UI with no real ownership of your data and PostgreSQL's powerful database limited to developer-friendly tools? Let's discover Tibble, a free open-source no-code alternative that combines the best of both worlds. With Tibble, you get a PostgreSQL database paired with an intuitive Airtable-like interface, perfect for collaborating with teams and customers without technical skills. Before exploring Exploring Tibble, let's see the different options to start using it. You can create your account on their cloud version, which appears to be free at the moment as they don't indicate any pricing on their website. You can self-deploy it by following their Docker installation guide, or you can use a platform like ours, Elestio, to deploy the self-hosted version on your server or the cloud provider of your choice, while we take care of the installation, backups, updates, and maintenance for you. To start using Tibble on our platform, head to ls.io and click on Login. Then deploy my first service, search for Tibble and click on Select. Choose between the different cloud providers or you can choose the last option which is to deploy it onto your own server. Adjust your region and service plan based on your needs and once you are ready, click on Next. Finalize the different settings. Choose between the different level of support. I will keep the free included one and then hit the Create Service button. Once the installation is finished, you will receive this email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on LSTO Administration Dashboard UI of your T-Ball instance. Copy the password to your clipboard with that button and access your instance by following the admin UI link. Then type your email and paste the password from your clipboard and click on sign in. You have this nice onboarding tour explaining you the basic features. So first thing they want us to create is a space. They say where each space invites user to collaborate. It serves as a primary navigation element within the menu bar. Okay, next. So they want us to create our first base inside our space. Okay, so by default, it automatically created a space based on my user account. Instead of this one, let's create another space. Let's rename it with the three dots, LSTO. Click outside and it will automatically save it. You have a small star here to add it to your favorite. And then we will create our first base. So it is the equivalent of a database containing multiple tables. Because we are on the self-hosted version, we can only create it from scratch. But if we use the cloud version, we can use different templates. If we go on their website, we can browse the different templates. Let's use it. So inside the cloud version, not on the self-hosted one, I have created myself an account. Let's add it to my space. And here we have a preview of the template. So even if they are not accessible on the self-hosted version, we can look at what it is, take example from it, maybe export the data and go back to our instance, create one from scratch and copy different things that you like on another template. But it's okay, I have some creativity, I will be able to create a database from scratch. So again, we have the onboarding tour. We need to create our first table. Okay, let's do it. You can create it from scratch again or from a CSV or Excel file. Very convenient. Let's do it from scratch. Then we have directly the onboarding tour presenting us what are views, filters, sorting and group, but we will do it together later. So let's just keep it quickly and let's focus on the data first. Our table currently is named new table, not very useful name. So let's name it teachers. Hit enter and it will save it. And let's say we are a school, we have different teachers, different students, different subjects. So what our teachers need first is not a label, but the name of the teacher. So let's name it full name, the type, it will just be some basic text. We can forbid duplicate values, but people can have the same name. You can assign a default value and show it as a different type of value. Here is a name, so it will be text. But let's say you have a URL, an email or phone, it will be still text, but you can know that you expect to navigate to that URL or that it is an email or a phone. So let's save it. And before adding more columns, 
we will create another table. We will name it subjects and label we can name it name of the subject we will only need this column so maybe we can get rid of the other ones and inside you have this nice inline edition let's add math english sports so you can edit this way quickly or you can open expand it and edit inside here convenient when you have a lot of columns but here we have one value the inline edition is perfect okay let's go back to our teachers and we will need to edit the columns available so first we have a number we can edit and choose another type of data we want to know the subject this teacher is teaching to so let's say subject and the type it could be a single select where you will type all the different options but me I linked it to another table so when it's this use case you will choose link to another record maybe I should move myself link to another record then you will have new options here link table so it's to the subjects table do we need a backlink field in the link table no do we want to allow multiple select if we want multiple subject per teacher? In this case, let's say no. So keep it unchecked. And if we allow a subject to be chose by multiple teachers, yes. So it should be good. We can click on save. Let's add a few teacher. Myself, John Doe, Toto. And then you can double click because it's a linked table it will open the different values available in subjects let's say I'm a mathematics teacher John Doe an English one and Toto a sports one by the way I didn't allow multiple selection so if I select another one it won't keep the other one checked it will replace it which is the expected behavior let's confirm then we have the status to do in progress or down and this is irrelevant to our use case we can edit it and say available is the teacher available or not so we can say buzzy or free or sick we save it we, we could add other options adjust the colors but let's keep it simple save i am buzzy this one is free and this one sick you have other cool type of data let's say the picture of the teacher the type it will be an attachment so it to add images documents or other files to be viewed or downloaded let's save it we can double click anywhere and add a picture i add my picture perfect here instead of just displaying the link if you use a classical uh, database and database tool you would see the url but here because it knows it's an attachment and the type is an image it will show this nice preview by the way it's the same for the mathematics here if you would use pg admin it wouldn't do the link to the other table which would result in the id of subject and then you would need to go to subject and see it unless you code sql views so okay i won't add a picture for every teacher or should i i will just upload the icon of lsto so when we will see views later it will look better okay perfect and let's see what other type of data we can create i know there is a rating if you rate your teachers this is a bad scenario so you have different types it can be a user it can be a date a rating it's what we will use checkbox or formula roll up let's choose rating you can choose what type of rating it is the classical stars or the stars with a different color or different symbol let's say we just want to give love to our teachers so it will be hearts and you have the choice between how many you want let's say the maximum is three and save of course people will rate me three hearts while the others would be one okay so this is one classical way it's a table view to add data 
We are in grid view, but there are other type of view we can use. For example, to add users instead of adding lines here, you can click on the plus. And we have the choice between a gallery, Kanban, calendar or form view. Let's create a form view. And from here, you have a form builder. You can pick the different fields that your user can set if they are required or not. So let's say we want maybe all of them. So we add a variable, picture, and rating. You can also edit the cover image of your form, edit the title, add an icon and description. And once you are good, you can preview it. We can use the share button, sharing, copy the link. We have the choice if it is restricted by a password, if it requires the user to be logged in to Tiable. So let's open it. And here we have our form. We type a name, the subject. It will list the different values in our subject table. It's another sport teacher. A variable, we have this nice drop down. We can add a picture. Again, I will use our logo and it's SpongeBob SquarePants, so it will be three hearts. Submit succeed and it empty the fields, perfect. And if we go back to our grid view, we can now see our new teacher here. So if we open one of the line here, you can see we have the addition for each field, but we have more than that. We can click here on the history button and you can see the audit trail to know every edition when it was done and by which user. Very useful to know who messed up with the data. You also have this comment here to discuss with your team about different aspects of a row. Then like on Airtable, you can filter data, for example, a condition where the subject is. And again, it's a linked table. It will seek the data from the subject. So we want only the sport teacher. And here we are. We could save it into a specific view that we, you would name sport teacher. But let's get rid of that filter. Instead, you can sort or group your data. Let's do it by subject. And you can see how it's grouped by the different subjects. The grid view is nice, but it's not something you would display on a website. So maybe you could use the gallery view. Automatically, it will detect that we have a field that is an attachment and display it as the image of the cards. But if it's incorrect and you have multiple ones, you could customize it show what data you want to display. So maybe you want the full name and subject and the rating. Here you have your lovely cards. You could use the share and then embed it into your website by using this link. This platform is perfect for collaboration because it doesn't require technical skills. So you can use the invite button and invite your whole team. Let's say John do at gmail.com and you can add specific role if you allow them to do anything only edit data use as a commenter so it's a read only or viewer really read only without comments you can invite users y by one with their email or with an invite link maybe a viewer one and they would have access to your whole database Based on what you're doing, it can be pretty useful. For example, onboarding resources for a new team member. But the big difference between Tibble and Airtable, except the pricing, is that it is a real Postgre database. So if you go into API, automatically it will generate for you a RESTful API. So you can follow it and create a query builder and then do requests to have access to your data. But it's better than that you have the database connection. So they are telling you that you can access the database directly through the database connection. If we go back to Elestio, you have a second line, which is PG admin. Display the credentials, copy the password to your clipboard and access your PG admin instance. Enter your credentials, click on login. And this is the PHP Maya admin for Postgre. So here you can explore your database. So it's a real Postgre database. Let's expand database. Here you can see you have a Postgres and table. Let's expand the table one, then go to schemas. And you can see 
the different tables it created. If you open tables, you can see inside two table. I'm not very happy with the name of the table. By the way, it's better if my face doesn't cover it. So you can see it's named new table, but inside it contains everything that we did with additional field that they are using. But you can see there is label, status, number, picture, rating. And the other one, I guess, it's for the subject. So if we go to columns, we only have the label. Let's try to see it. Right click, view, edit data, all rows. And we have here label, math, English, sports. And you can see they have the created time, last modified at, created by, that is used by table, but is not shown to you directly, except when you expand a record. So you have that lovely interface from table, and then you have full control of your data using the direct access to Postgre. You can use code to interact with your database or use no-code tools like AppSmith and connect your Postgre database directly to it. As always, I recommend you to dive into the documentation to discover features that I didn't cover in this video and that could help you in your business or your projects. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering T-Ball with us. Please hit the like button to help our channel be more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our next platform overviews. If you want to continue your open source journey, watch this video available here.